The new year is near, and the sound of dough being pounded can be heard all around the village. Since the old days, dock or rice cake are never left out during the lunar calendar holidays, like Samjidnal in the third month, Tano in the fifth month, and Chusak in the eighth month. Duck is also a festive food made for special occasions, such as the birthdays of one's elders, marriages, or chesa, the religious service to honor one's ancestors. Duck signifies congratulations and blessings. There is a variety of duck as different ingredients are used in different seasons. The traditional beverages served with duck are also a favorite treat for Koreans. Duck and the traditional beverages are our forefathers' creation of age-old wisdom and devotion. Let's take a look into taste. Whenever there is a merry festival in the village, people come out and gather to enjoy the food and entertainment. A celebration in one household means a festival for the entire village. Sharing the party food with neighbors was an expression of affiliation. Duck is always a favorite for festive parties and is never left out. Sharing the party duck with neighbors and relatives, one hopes for blessings and long-lasting peace. The variety of duck shows well our forefathers' custom of enjoying different food in different seasons. By tradition, white duck is served on New Year's Day, Nobi Songpyeon on the first day of the second month, Sorechi Jolpyeon on Tano, and Shirotok during the tenth month. Duck can be classified according to the different methods applied while preparing. It can be made by pounding, steaming, kneading, or by pan frying. Duck tastes differently according to the different methods used for preparation. Among the different kinds of duck, pounded duck are the mostly chewy and sticky ones. The more it is pounded, the stickier it becomes. It can also be named according to the different ingredients used such as glutinous rice or non-glutinous rice. There are a variety of injolmi, such as flour injolmi, injolmi roll, and colored injolmi. They all have different komul, or coatings on them. Komuls of ground yellow beans, ground green beans, and black sesame are used for the three colored injolmi. Injolmi is also called injolbyong because it is sticky and has to be cut off by pulling the dough. While dock is commonly made by grinding glutinous rice, injolmi is made by steaming or pounding. In winter, the dough is not coated with komul, so it can be cooked on a grill or pan fried to be eaten with grain syrup. The dough is shaped into bars of approximately one centimeter and then cut into bite sized bits. Then it is covered with komul, the coating. Injolmi is called mulguat injolmi. Soki injolmi or jujube injolmi, according to the different ingredients used and different kinds of komo that go well with each injolmi, is used as a coating. Three colored injolmi is made with plain injolmi. Mugwort injolmi is coated with red bean komo, while soki injolmi is coated with ground pine nuts or ground sesame komo. Three colored injolmi is mostly enjoyed at marriages 
or 60th birthday celebrations. Plain dog made from non-glutinous rice is called jolpyeon. Injolmi and jolpyeon are the two basic dog that are sent from the bride's house to the groom's house after a marriage ceremony. There are various jolpyeon, like the surichi jolpyeon, enjoyed during tano, flower jolpyeon, and tasik jolpyeon. And toksal, or the mold used to shape dog, adds style to the jolpyeon. Jolpyeon is used for shaping various dock. In the Chosun dynasty, wooden and ceramic toxols were used. The various designs of toxol include flowers, such as the lotus flower, pomegranate, or plum blossoms, letters signifying longevity and blessings, animal figures or geometrical figures. Each design bears much hope and many wishes. Jolpyeon is usually shaped from karatok, which is commonly made for New Year's Day. The karatok is cut into five centimeter long bars. Small pieces of dock, each colored differently, are laid on the center of the karatok. A toksol is put on top and pressed to shape the jolpyeon. takes devotion to add color to the plain dock. Such devotion has allowed dock to be passed from generation to generation. While serving Jolpyeon, each one is coated with sesame oil so they will not stick to each other and then served with honey. Dok is a traditional food that passes on the spirit of our forefathers. Where does dok originate from? 최초로 언제부터 발달했다 하는 거는 지금 얘기는 할수 없지만 곡물 음식을 가루로 먹으면서부터 우리가 떡을 먹었다고 볼수 있어요. 그러니까 곡물 음식이 처음에 나다를 끓여서 먹는 거니까 지금 얘기하는 죽 형태로 먹다가 그 다음에 가루 형태로 쪄서 먹고. 그 다음에 밥을 지어서 먹고 그렇게 발달한 걸로 얘기하고 있죠. 근데 우리나라 떡이 그찐 음식이 발달한 거는 고구려 벽화에도 일상 부엌 용구가 나온 데는 반드시 그 시루가 나오는데 그 시루에 가루 음식을 쪄서 먹었으니까 그게 떡의 시초라고 우리는 그렇게 얘기할 수 있죠. 그래서 떡은 그때부터 삼국시대 보다 이전이 될 수도 있겠죠. 그렇게 해가지고 발달을 해서 오늘날에 이르러서 그 종류가 250여 종이 더 넘는 걸로 제가 알고 있습니다. It is believed that dog made from grains date back to prehistoric times. The stove place found in a prehistoric site supports this. Also in sites that date back to the 8th century, which is before agricultural practices had been developed, tools like kaldol and huakdol used for hulling grains have been discovered. Wooden mills and mortars were also used to hull rice. And more improved tools such as foot-operated mills or ox-operated mills enable us to track the development of dock. The unique characteristics of Korean dock are described in Che Nam Sun's book, Chosun Sangshik. Unlike Japanese or Chinese dock that mostly use flour and glutinous rice, 
Korean dak mostly uses non-glutinous rice. Shiru, or earthenware steamers, have been used as early as the Goguryeo period, as the murals show. These steamers are earthenware pots that are used to steam non-glutinous rice. Shiro dak is dak steamed in earthenware steamers and is one of the most common dak in Korea today. To make shiro dak, first red beans are boiled and mashed. Then a layer of red beans are piled upon a layer of ground rice. And then the red beans, and then the rice, and so on. And this is all put into the steamer with a cloth over it, and then steamed. The red bean that is used for Koma signifies peace and well-being for the family. During the 10th month of the lunar calendar, it is customary to make shirotuk and share it with the elders of the village. Chusok is never complete without a full moon and sangpyeong. With harvesting over, the family gathers to make sangpyeong. A variety of sangpyeon include colored sangpyeon, potato sangpyeon filled with potatoes, and tasik sangpyeon, which is a traditional sweet. The color of sangpyeon is made by mixing ground rice with ground pine bark. The forefathers believed that this would instill in the sangpyeon the upright spirit of the pine tree. To make green sangpyeon, ground mugwort was added. Songi, or the bark of the pine tree, mugwort and plain rice are ingredients that color the brown, green, and white sangpyeon. The colors of Korean duck are all created from natural ingredients and have no artificial coloring. When the dough is ready, sangpyeon is shaped by hand. There is an old saying that a girl who makes well-shaped sangpyeon will give birth to beautiful babies. The filling that goes inside dak is called so. For sangpyeon, sesame, mashed beans or boiled chestnuts are used as so. Sangpyeon tastes different according to the so that goes inside it. The size and shape of sangpyeon differ by region. In Seoul, sangpyeon is made small in the shape of seashells. In Kangwon province on the east coast and the Hwanghae province in the center of the Korean peninsula, it is larger with finger marks on them. Sangpyeon, implying pine trees, gets its name because pine needles are used when steaming sangpyeon. Several days before Chusak, soft pine needles are picked and cleaned. They are placed among the sangpyeon before steaming. give sangpyeon its unique fragrance. In the old days, the landlord used to give sangpyeon to servants to encourage them to farm well the next year. The colorful tanja, or kaksak tanja, is another variety of kneaded dak, like the sangpyeon. Kaksak tanja was enjoyed in the palaces and by the upper class. It is made of glutinous rice. The dough is kneaded and formed into a long cylindrical shape. Then it is cut into finger-sized pieces. To make tanja, ground cinnamon is added to minced citron or jujube. To make tanja, the cylinder is cut and rolled out, then placed on the dough, and then rolled once again.
for garnishings or kumyong, jujube, chestnut, and stone mushrooms are thinly shredded. When these three ingredients are mixed and coated over the filled tanja, the kaksek tanja is complete. Also, seasonal ingredients are used to make tanja. Zakuri is used in spring, chestnuts and citron in the fall, and jujube and stone mushrooms in winter. Kaksek tanja is a classical duck where so and komyong are nicely combined. Pan frying is an easier and simpler way to make dok. Among the various pan fried dok are the half moon shaped bukumi, juak, which is shaped like a pebble, and huajang, which is fried with fresh cut flowers on top. Hwajan is a widely enjoyed pan-fried duck, and it is eaten on Samjidnal, the third day of the third month of the lunar calendar. Petals of azaleas, roses, and chrysanthemums are used to decorate Hwajan. When flowers are hard to find, jujubes and crown daisies are used. To make Hwajan, small round pieces of glutinous rice dough are pan-fried and then garnished with jujube and crown daisy pieces. In some provinces, Huajan is made large, while in other places like Seoul, it is enjoyed in smaller sizes. Korean forefathers floated azalea petals in their liquor and enjoyed their drinks with Huajan. Korean traditional beverages developed together with dok. Even in the old days, Korea was famous for its beautiful natural scenery. Pure and clean water was found easily in the past, and Korean forefathers added natural ingredients that are healthy for the body to make various kinds of beverages. In our country, the 그 사차를 중심으로 인, 어, 로 해서 차밭을 일구기 시작했고 승려들을 중심으로 차 마시는 문화가 성행했음을 알수 있습니다. 고려 시대에는 불교 문화가 꽃 피우면서 따라서 차 문화도 최전성기를 맞이하게 되었지만 조선 시대에 와서는 숙류 억불 정책으로 인해서 녹차 마시는 문화는 쇠퇴해 가면서 그 대신 다른 차 양리성이 있거나 향기가 있는 차들 예를 들어 모가차, 구기차, 국화차와 같은 것들이 발달하게 되었고 궁중이나 반가를 중심으로 해서는 화채나 밀수 또는 식혜, 수정과와 같은 화려한 음청류가 발달하기 시작했습니다. Imwon Shibyukji classifies Korean beverages by the methods used to make them. A variety of beverages including chang, kalsu, suksu, tang, and tea all show how early beverages were developed in Korea. The kalsu is when the water is drinking, it is a drink of water, a drink of water,물에 타서 먹는 건데 공통점은 갈증 날때 먹는 좋은 약효가 있는 것들이고 숙수는 우리 숙룡을 숙수라고 한다고 임원십육지에 기록도 있어요. 그러는데 자소나 정향이나 이런 것들을 불에 태웠다가 펄펄 끓는 물에 담갔다가 끓을 때 뜨거울 때 먹는 이런 것들이 숙수라고 돼 있어서 우리 숙룡 때문에 사라진 음료가 아닌가 그런 생각을 해봅니다. 특히 이그 율추 숙수라는 것은 율 그러니까 밤 속껍질을 달여 가지고 먹는 건데 요즘 밤 속껍질에 대한 어 야기성 효과에 대해서 많이 지금 어 얘기들 하고 있죠. 
Beverages like kalsu and suksu are no longer familiar to the Korean people. Kalsu was a thirst quenching beverage, and grape kalsu and Chinese quince kalsu were also popular. Chinese quince kalsu is said to be effective in the curing of back pains and neurological disorders. This indicates that concentrated juice processing was developed as early as the 18th century. Among traditional beverages that have been handed down, citron punch is the most delicious and fragrant. To make citron punch, the citrons are peeled and thinly sliced. Korean forefathers had been considerate enough to peel off the thick skin so the citrons may be enjoyed. This is then mixed with shredded pears, pomegranates, and pine nuts. To make it sweet, honey is added. The punch is served in small bowls. Citron punch uses both the peeling and the flesh of citrons. It is tasty and fragrant, befitting the autumnal sentiment. Wanso Byung is a unique traditional beverage that combines dok in with the drink. Wanso means the night of the full moon in the first month of the lunar calendar. It is a special treat for the Lunar New Year's Day. To make it yellow, gardenia is used. The gardenia fruit is bitter, but it is not poisonous. It is usually used for dyeing cloth or chon or grilled food. Using gardenia, the yellow glutinous rice mix is prepared. Then omija is used to make the pink mix. And mugwort for the green mix. From these three colored mixes, seal or small round balls are shaped. And for the so that goes into them, citron and jujube are minced. The so is formed into small round balls, or sail, and the sail is made round once again. The seol is then covered with starch, boiled in hot water, and then dipped in cold water. The boiled seol is placed into a bowl. Honey syrup is added, and pine nuts are floated to complete Wan So Byung. Wan So Byung allows you to enjoy dock, and a beverage is enjoyed during the summer. The medicinal benefits of pear and pepper have been applied to create pesuk, another traditional beverage. Pesuk was a rare treat during the Chosun dynasty, enjoyed only by the aristocracy. The flesh of the pear is spooned out and pepper seeds are placed inside. Sugar is then added to ginger water and then boiled. The pear is placed into the ginger water boiled and then cooled. Pesuk has a well-blended taste of pear and pepper. It is unique and also good for your health.
Duck has always been an important part of festivals and holidays since long ago. In preparing Duck, the devotion, wishes and blessings of the people were blended in. Korea's duck and traditional beverages are carefully created tastes that live on through the passage of time.